we did indicate through the social media that today's service will be a healing service and I'm not too sure if you've come prepared for that. Uh, we did uh, suggest that members fast and members pray so that we could be more in tune. That's what it's all about. More in tune with what God is wanting to do for us this morning. Um, I'd like to call this morning's service, uh, give it a title, Healing the Children's Bread. How nice to know today that despite all of the titles, and we have many titles, isn't it? We have many titles indeed. But one of the most precious one we have is this one, that we the children of God, that we the son of God. Who are you? I'm the son of God. I'm the son of the highest. I'm the daughter of the most holy one. And I don't think you can find a better title than that, being the children of God being in the family of God. Exodus 15, 26 says, For I am the Lord who heals you. Now when we talk about healing, we think of the healer, and the Bible is very clear, it is the Lord who heals us. So we need to please the Lord. And when we please the Lord, he is pleased to please us with his healing. In 1 Peter 2.24, we are told, by his stripes we are healed. We have that also in Isaiah uh, 53, verse number 5 onwards. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. God is saying that healing is there, that it is for all of us, and that we can have healing any time we call for it. We need to learn to ask. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. It doesn't say you must think about it. It says we need to open our mouths and we need to ask. We need to knock and we need to seek. And when we do these things, we find that we will be rewarded. In Jeremiah 33, 3, my favorite verse is this one. Call unto me, says Almighty God. Call, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things you know not of. In other words, God's throwing us an invitation, every one of us. He says, you just call. When you call... You won't find me relaxing. You won't find me having my 40 wink. You won't find me gone on a trip. You won't find me fishing. God says, when you call, I'll answer. He will answer immediately. Because he is never too busy for you. He is waiting for that call. And then he goes on to say, and I will show you great things and mighty things. You see, God doesn't want the normal for us. He doesn't want the usual. He doesn't want the ordinary. The Bible says great things and mighty things. Why does the Bible use the word great things? Because it's trying to make us understand that there isn't really an adequate word. There isn't to describe the awesomeness of God. So he just puts it as great. It's going to be great things and mighty things. So in other words, every time we pray, we should be in a receptive mode, ready to have the great things and the wonderful things happen for us, happen to us, happen with us, happen 
in us. But most times we, we pray, we don't look for these great things, we don't look for these mighty things, and they just go past us. And we miss out. But today let us become sensitive to what God is wanting us to have. Where does sickness come from? Well, is all sickness from the devil? The answer is yes. Indirectly, the devil is responsible for every sickness on this earth through Adam's sin. The devil is also responsible right now for many illnesses. He caused the delusions, the mind games, and, and the bodily ailments that we have. The devil can come and possess people and keep them crippled and keep them bent over, like we've uh, heard a few times uh, during this year in the healings. We find that God chases out devils, and God is wanting us to know that the devil's also a culprit in bringing sickness directly and also the culprit in bringing sickness indirectly. Diseases also come as a result of germs and viruses, germs and viruses, generational cases, and what you breathe, heat, and drink, and also incorrect taking of the Holy Communion. We've heard that we need to take it properly. And the Bible says if we don't take it properly, therefore there are many weak and sickly among you. Many weak and sickly among you, and many die. Because they don't honor the communion and hold it precious and holy. So we need to beware how we take the holy communion. And that's why I deliberately prayed that God will cleanse us and make us perfect for this particular uh, communion this morning. We feed ourselves daily. Okay. We feed ourselves small doses of, po of poison every day. Uh, we take it. Uh, through our water, the pesticides that they use for the vegetables when they grow our crops, uh, preservatives that they use in the food, and the chemicals that they use in the medicines we have all of the time. There's lots of poisons that we're taking in all of the time. And some of these poisons we look forward and deliberately buy these things, not realizing the effect that they have on us. And although we take a lot of poison in, God is gracious. God sets some things inside of us. He has got soldiers inside ready to fight these germs that come in. And, but, but eventually these systems that we have collapses because of the overwhelming power of chemicals and poisons that we constantly take in. Now, in India, in the last 10 years, the thriving population of the vultures were dying. And uh, the authorities were really worried and they called in the scientists to check it out. Why were these vultures dying? Now, the vultures were eating the cremated bodies or half cremated bodies. What used to happen, there's so much of people in India and they have special uh, stands where they cremate the bodies and the bodies are, uh, while they're cremated, not, sometimes they're not even fully cremated. Sometimes half, three quarter, and they're just pushed out into the river. And these vultures will go and eat all of these meats that are left over on the body. What they discovered was this one. The reasons why the vultures were dying was simply because of the medicines that those that died were taking. So those medicines were really like poison and that were killing the vultures off. So you can understand the amount of poisons we take in every day and therefore we have a uphill climb, a struggle to keep healthy. We need to do the following. We need to improve our heating style so we can improve the health. We need to have a positive outlook to life. One of the medicines we should have and include every day is called a merry heart. 
I know you have Voltaren and all the other medicines, but include a merry heart with that. What is a merry heart? Well, as a merry heart, it makes you happy and keeps you bubbling. And the Bible says that the merry heart worketh better than a medicine. Learn, learn today, if you haven't learned, learn to hum. <laughs> that is learn to hum. Learn to sing. Learn to smile. Learn to laugh. Learn to be happy. And if you learn that one line, let me repeat, learn to hum, learn to sing, learn to smile, learn to laugh, learn to be happy. And if you're happy, it will chase out a lot of the stress and pressure that we have that keeps us down, keeps us in bed, keeps us miserable. Learn this, don't you dare complain, grumble, moan groan get that out of your life get it out of your life and if ever anything irritates god it's that line that line that com where people complain and grumble and moan and go just get it out of your system and you feel so nice and you feel so fresh god heals sometimes it is immediate sometimes it takes a while Sometimes God's healing comes in a manner that we were not expecting. But God heals all the time. Healing requires faith. Jesus often said to the people that he healed, Thy faith has made thee whole. Faith as a little as a mustard seed can help you move mountains. In other words, you don't need mega faith. And if you do have mega faith, it is great. You can do great things. But even if it's a tiny bit of faith, God will utilize that to work for your good. Only believe. That is a secret. Only believe. Only believe. Believe, only believe, all things are possible. How many things? All things are possible. No matter how big the things, no matter how small the things, all things are possible. Only believe. And the question is this morning, do you believe? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in him as being the healer? Do you believe that he can make a turn around? Do you believe that he can bring healing? Do you believe that he can bring deliverance? Only believe. We find that healing comes. Healing sometimes comes from just the word alone. God sent his word to heal our diseases. So you can be 100% sure that the word will work. Sometimes you, have, you need an addit, uh, addictive Additive, additive, that's the word. You need an additive. You have the word and you need to add something onto it. And what you need to have, add to the word sometimes, in conjunction with the word, is the anointing. And then the laying on of hands. They also work. The word plus anointing plus the laying on of hands. Sometimes uh, the healing comes with the word. And also another additive, which is medicinal use. So God also uses medicine in a company with his word. In 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 1 to 7, we have an interesting story. And this is how the story goes. King Hezekiah was generally a nice man. But he was terribly sick. So God sent prophet Isaiah to him with a word. And prophet Isaiah came and he said, well, probably raised his hands and said, thus saith the Lord, you're going to die. <laughs> I mean, that's a news we, we all know is, is a genuine one. We're all going to die. But he said this, you're going to die soon, shortly. And I have a word from God that you need to get your house in order quickly. Because of your sickness, you're going to go. So, Prophet Isaiah gave the message and he just started walking out of the court. And by the time he got to the second court, he got a message from God to go back. What had happened in between was this. When King Hezekiah got the news that he was going to die, 
it was like shock hit him. And he started crying bitterly. He said, but my God, understand. I mean, I mean, I'm one of the more nicer fellows, you know. You've had many kings come along and they've created debt and they've brought about these foreign worship. But I'm one of the more nicer fellows. You know, I, I tried my level best and I'm trying to bring some reforms and I'm trying to bring some changes and all of that. I haven't quite completed my work. Give me a little bit time. A little bit more time so I can complete that work. And so God said, all right, okay, okay. He sent a message to Isaiah, Isaiah, go back. Go back to that king, that weeping king, go back. And we found prophet Isaiah comes back to King Hezekiah. And he says, I have another word from the Lord that cancels the first word. This word supersedes the other word. This now is the fresh prophecy for you. You're going to get well. And you're going to live another 15 years. To give a chance to do all that you have in mind for his glory. I want you to read that portion of scripture at home when you go. It is in 2 Kings chapter 21 to 7. I'll, t I'll tell you what aspect I want you to look at. It is so exciting when the king finally says, I don't be really believe. How do I know? And then there is a little challenge. And the prophet Isaiah says, God's going to change the heavenlies for you. He's going to do something with the sky, with the sun. And then the challenge goes on. And Ezekiah said, no use letting the sun go forward 10 degrees. Let it go back. And, 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 and then they, they set the dial and, and the sun goes back 10 degrees. It's an amazing story indeed. But let me move on. We find that the king had boils and all of those. And Isaiah said, you now take figs. You now take figs and you place those figs on those boils. The point I was trying to bring is this one. That God gave his word for healing. God said, tell the man, I'll heal him. But God also allowed medicinal use. So I tell you today, as you go through your issues, health issues, don't get too heavenly minded. In other words, don't take just portions of the scripture and hinge on it and allow it to become your downfall. The Bible says today, Jesus said this, the sick need a doctor. So do all that you can with prayer and fasting and waiting on God and sensitive to his word. And, and, and when you reach a stage, you need to also consult the others that God has among us, the specialists and the doctors and everybody else. I had a dear friend of mine who I admired quite a bit and I learned a lot from. But he was steeped in some ways. He never ever wanted to go to a doctor no matter what his problem was. And the poor fellow died at a early age when he could be standing next to me and kicking dust. If he only listened and went to doctors. So sometimes we got to be sensitive and don't get carried away because God has also said these people and God will allow us to go to the correct people and get the correct treatment so that we can move away. So healing accompanied by medicine is part of God's plan. We find in Mark 140 a leper makes a risk, takes a risk and he comes to Jesus. Now leprosy is, uh, was a terrible contagious disease then. Uh, it's so much more subdued today. But um, we find that this fellow took a risk. Why? Because lepr leprous people were chased away. They were not to mingle with the crowd. They normally had a bell like a little goat, you know, to say that they are around. And, and this fellow, this leper, took a risk. And... Uh, he ran and came to Jesus. He said, Jesus, I'm at your mercy. You, you know my condition. I'm, I'm finished. I'm not even supposed to be standing here with you. Think and make a plan. 
you think you can make a plan. And the Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion. And, and that's a beautiful part about God. He's always moved with compassion. Not moved with rage and anything else. He's moved with compassion. And he had compassion for that man. A man that felt he didn't deserve the healing. So no matter who we are, where we are today, I want you to know that Jesus stands and he's always moved with compassion. In, and Jesus said, I am willing be clean. And the man became clean that very moment. I'll just conclude with this. In Mark chapter 2, we have an exciting story. It's a pity we couldn't spend more time on this particular story, but it's a lovely story indeed. Jesus goes into the house of a man to go and spend some time. And there were a lot of gate crashes. And wherever Jesus goes, people go by their hundreds and by their thousands. So they flocked into that little house. And eventually everybody that can creep in and can crawl in and move in and shift in all came in. And, and the place was jam-packed. Nobody else could go through because it was jam-packed right up to the door. And there was a man that was a paralytic. His four friends decided to give him a hand. And they knew one thing. That if they took him to Jesus, there's healing there. That was for sure that they can only get him to Jesus. But when they came and they saw the house was jam-packed, they saw lots of people all around, and they looked and they found there was no way they could get in. They decided to do something. They decided to take the law into their own hands. They went to that house, and they started taking the tiles out from the roof. They made a little bed and they tied four strings and they lowered that man through that roof. Jesus was busy healing and teaching and everything else. But he allowed that disruption. The bed came and fell right there, settled right there near him. And what did Jesus do? Did Jesus turn around and tell them, you disrespectful people? How dare you do that? How dare you come and destroy this man's house? Who gave you permission to go on the top? He said, absolutely nothing. He said, absolutely nothing like that. But he looked, I believe he looked and smiled. And I believe he could have just shook his head and said, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. You see, desperate faith make you do amazing de things. Desperate faith make you do out of go out of the way. Desperate faith makes you go the extra mile. Desperate faith makes you avoid the common sense thinking because you're desperate. And what did Jesus do? He said. He complimented them for their desperate faith. He stops everything. He brings healing to the man. And everybody was happy. And that is what Jesus is wanting to do. You can come crawling. You can come walking. You can come stalling. You can come running. You can come... Whatever way you can come. As long as you come to Jesus... Is waiting with his hands outstretched. And doesn't he say, come, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Come with your load, come. And when you come to Jesus, he's willing to touch you. And he's willing to restore you again. James 5, verse number 14 says this. Is anyone among you sick. If there is, then he says, let them call for the elders of the church and let the elders pray over them, anointing them with the oil in the name of Jesus our Lord. 
Is any among you sick? If you're sick and you play it like you're not sick, who knows, maybe that sick will never leave you. But if you are sick, the Bible says allow yourself to be played over by the laying on of hands and the anointing of the Lord. We'd like our pastors and elders that are here would like to join us in this healing ceremony. If you can come over, we'll get the band to come over. And let's charge the atmosphere. Let's make this atmosphere conducive for the healing service. And let us be able to just lay hands and bring healing upon all those that are not well here today. All things are possible, only believe. I believe you, Lord. I believe you for healing. I believe you for a turnaround. Where is the healing should be directed to? The healing can be directed to your mind. Sometimes you need healing in your mind. You need healing in your body. You need healing in your soul. You're not able to sleep at night. You have restlessness. You have lumps on your body. You have a bodily aches wherever. You have organ weaknesses and organ failures. and Whatever the nature of that illness. I'll tell you what. Let me tell you something. These brethren that are here are not the healers. If they were the healers, then I would say, you don't waste your time. I mean, uh, Pastor Reuben and, and Pastor Subra, they just stay on top. I mean, what, what can they really do? I would have told you that. But today I'm telling you that the healer is Jesus. And Jesus is going to heal through them with the anointing of the oil and the laying hand of, hand, of, 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 of hands. With the laying on of hands and with the anointing, healing is going to come. You've got to believe. Do you have faith to believe? Well, you can. Let's all stand today. Let's all stand today as we sing. Praise his name. Just believe. Praise the name of Jesus. Just see the board and sing. Let's all sing together. We need everyone to sing, please. Please, please sing. We need to change the atmosphere and you can change it with your singing. Please, please open the mouth a little bit louder, please. your name. So much power in your Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. God, we believe. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. You can start walking forward. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Just believe. Praise your name. Praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. We believe you, Father. Say that this morning. We believe you. We believe you, Lord, for healing. We believe you, Lord. We believe you, Lord. We believe you, Lord. 
Praise your name. 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 Praise your Lord. Just mention what you want to be prayed for. As you come over, just mention what you want to be prayed for. Okay. You are 
Yeah.
praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise his name. We thank you for this awesome time we've had in your presence, oh God. We really don't want to go home. Father, we thank you for the fullness that has come among us, oh God, and has taken over all, all of us. May that same spirit that we have right now go with us, Lord, and be with us always. 